The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Firestop PU Foams, Myths and Misconceptions. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. A copy of the following slides is attached as a handout to this presentation, so please feel free to use, the, sorry, to use them at any time. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Faye Peat, and I am part of the engineering team here at Hilti in Great Britain. Okay, before we start, um, a quick overview of how you can interact with us today using the GoToWebinar software. On the right-hand side of your screen is the control panel, where you can ask questions and select your preferred audio mode. At the minute, you might only be able to see a small orange arrow. If you click on this, it will open up and look similar to the slide that we have shown here. On the left is the slides. So you'll see on the right-hand side in the corner either a small orange arrow or this big box uh, with the, the audio system and the questions options. And on the other side of the screen, on the, the rest of the screen, you'll see the slides that I'm going to be talking about. You can use the question box during the presentation, and we want you to do this if you can ask questions at any time. Uh, nobody else sees them, it's just us that sees them, and we will try and answer you either during the webinar or afterwards we'll get back to you with an answer. So please feel free to use this at any time during the webinar today. Okay, uh, during today's webinar, we're going to be talking about polyurethane foam, some of the misconceptions about its usage and why it shouldn't be considered a standalone Firestop product, even if there is test data. We're also going to discuss some products that can be used for correct fire stopping where PU foams have been misused and are being misused at present. Okay, flexible polyurethane foam helps in providing comfort to everyone every day. It's best known for supporting our body for a large part of the day in mattresses, upholstered furniture, car seats. What's sometimes less known is that we enjoy the benefits of hundreds of polyurethane foam articles without even noticing. Its applications are virtually endless, ranging from small um, essential items like sponges in the kitchen, uh, medical dressings, to large filters and soundproofing systems that keep our environment clean and quiet. Polyurethane is a leading member of the wide-ranging and highly diverse family of polymers or plastics. Polyurethane can be a solid or have an open cellular structure, in which case it's called a foam, and foams can be flexible or rigid. As a simple explanation, manufacturers make polyurethane foam by reacting polyols and diisocyanates, both products derived from crude oil. A series of additives are necessary to produce a high-quality PU foam product, depending on the application the foam will be used for. Each form of polyurethane foam has many uses. As mentioned, flexible polyurethane foam blocks are used for bedding, furniture and automotive applications. Some PU foams are also moulded, especially for use in the automotive sector, for car seats. Rigid foams are mainly used for thermal insulation of buildings, and this is the PU foam that we will be considering today, as it's used widely and frequently in building construction. This type of PU foam is normally expelled from pressurised cans using long nozzles, and it comes out as a sticky liquid. This substance then quickly expands to typically 40 times its original volume to form a rigid foam. PU foams are not structural materials and hence should not be used in areas subject to foot traffic where such traffic is likely to pass over the seal and transfer load to the sealing material. If you consider foam itself, it can end up quite brittle and fragile, and if people are going to be walking across it, then it's going to use its, its adhesiveness to the, to the surfaces that it's been joining. PU foam is a very versatile product used for insulating and sealing applications. Fire rating of certain grades of PU foam has made certain applications much easier to achieve. The prime and main example of this is to seal fire door frames into the wall. This ensures that the overall integrity of the fire door is not compromised by any gaps around the frame. The use of aerosol apl applied expanding polyurethane foam for the sealing of service penetrations and used against the spread of fire is becoming widespread and common in the construction industry. Labelling claiming the products are fire rated and a failure to understand the terms of this fire rating is leading to erroneous use of these materials. PU foam is a very versatile product which can and should be used for insulating and sealing applications. And it is true that the range of fire rating, sorry, that the fire rating of certain grades of PU foam has made certain applications much easier to achieve. As we mentioned, the prime example of this is to seal fire door frames into the wall. 
However, the fire rating for this application cannot be translated to any other application such as cables or pipe penetrations, as the terms of the fire tests to give the product its fire rating relate specifically to the use in a gap to seal for a fire door. Okay, so we've mentioned how the fire foam should be used, or the PU foam. So let's take a look at some common misinterpretations and how PU foams are being used in the construction industry today. Expanding foam is by far the most common problem in incorrect fire stopping. Foams in use are all PU based despite the different colours available. Foams which are claimed to have a fire rating are in fact subject to fire tests. However, the tests that these are subject to are for linear gap seals and a gap generally around 15 to 20 mil. Some products claim 4 hour fire rating, but that is for a 10 mil wide joint in a 250 mil thick concrete block work. There is no test evidence by any manufacturer that shows suitability of expanding foam around pipes or cables. As we've mentioned, the use of expanding foam is restricted to gaps. There is one principal use of these foams, that's to seal the fire door frames. In this case, the foam, say for example the CF125 foam, must be covered, say by an architrave, to provide a seal for the foam itself. PU foam should always be covered, as exposure to UV light eventually causes the PU foam structure to become very brittle and crack. It starts to get an orange appearance. This then loses any fire rating it would have had. So, as we mentioned, even in the application it's supposed to be for, if it's not sealed and covered, then it can still lose the fire rating it's been tested for. Here we can see a crude representation of the fire tests undertaken for PU foam. Consider that when tests are undertaken, the presumption is that the foam will be used to make good a linear gap in minor penetrations at no more than 15 mil in depth. <clears throat> Therefore, it should be clear that using it around pipes and cables as a fire stopping filler of any kind is wrong. According to the test data, this test was carried out with the foam in a 15 mil opening through a 225 mil thick solid wall in order to achieve its fire rating. In summary, the foam that is available to buy in every builder's shops should only be used for the application it has been tested for. Example is shown. But due to misconceptions around the testing procedure, we think and trust that it can be put anywhere and achieve the rating that is shown on the packaging. This is incorrect. We need to make sure that it is used for the correct application and not used erroneously around the building site as a filler, assuming that it's going to be fire stopping that particular breach or hole. Here we can see some typical applications or examples of the use of PU foam as seen on various sites. Incorrect uses on site. It's true that some of these foams do have a 4 hour fire rating, as we've said, but not for these applications. Anyone can guess how long the foam on the left will last. It will eventually fail because of how the heat is transmitted through the foam due to the cables passing through the body. To reiterate, the fire ratings of foams are established by testing in a joint. With cables, heat passes along the cable and melts the foam from the inside out. Here we can see some services penetrating a partition wall. Partitions get their fire resistance from the plasterboard sheet. Cut into the sheet and you lose the fire resistance. Any breaches therefore need to be sealed. We need to use them to seal them against the face of the plasterboard using suitable fire stop materials and not just filled with PU foam as shown here. We will look later on in this webinar at some ways of filling off and sealing these breaches and ensuring that the hole in the firewall is correctly fire stopped. PU foams which are to be used in a linear gap or service penetration applications must have their fire performance determined by testing to the appropriate national or European fire resistant standards. In the UK the appropriate standard is BS 476 parts 20 slash 22, BS EN 1366 hyphen 4 and in the case of linear gaps and BSEN 1366-3 for service penetration seals. Once tested to the required standards it is important that the scope of the application of the test results is assessed by a competent person or organisation in accordance with current industry agreed guidance and that the products are not used outside the scope of such guidance without further support from expert opinion. To strongly reiterate, PU foams tested as linear gap seals cannot be used to seal pipe or cable penetrations. If they're going to be used for this, they should be tested for this. Therefore, test data needs to be provided if such applications, as, as in this picture, are being done on site. 
A consideration for this is to see how PU foams actually react to fire. Okay, here we have a short video which highlights how quickly the cables running through the foam transfer the heat and therefore allow the fire to breach the wall. The consideration should be that the polyurethane materials are organic and like other organic materials such as wood, paper, cotton, wool, etc., they are able to ignite and burn if exposed to a sufficient heat source. Organic foam insulation, regardless of whether the foam contains fire retardants, should always be considered and it should be considered combustible and handed accordingly. Precautions should therefore be taken to minimise any potential for fire through accidental ignition in handling, storage and usage. How polyurethane foams are used ultimately helps determine their fire safety. So as we've said, if they are to be used on site in a situation where fire stopping is required, they should only be used for applications where relevant test data is available and not for applications such as in this video here. As the video shows in just over four minutes, the smoke and ultimately the fire has penetrated the foam and therefore breached the wall. So we can see that the foam is not correct for this particular application. Many PU foams claim to be fire rated, often citing, for example, a Class 0, a Class B1 or similar performance when tested against British or European standards. These classes are reaction to fire classifications, which are concerned with the ignitability, surface spread of flame and heat release characteristics of the material. Reaction to fire classifications cannot support the use of the material where fire resistance is required, such as in linear gap or service penetration seals. Joints and gaps don't have services running through them. Service pipes and cables conduct heat and melt the foam from the inside, and failure can occur in less than five minutes, certainly far less than some of the claimed fire ratings on the market. UK guidance suggests that openings for small plastic pipes of 40mm in diameter or less need only be fire stopped around the pipe without the need for the use of a pipe closure device or a metallic sleeve. In such circumstances, it is important that the seal around the pipe is non-combustible so as to limit the size on any resultant opening in the fire separating construction and consequently the use of PU foam is not suitable. Plastic pipes may also be sealed by the use of intermescent wrap systems designed to expand under fire conditions, crushing the softened pipe and sealing the opening. Such systems require external restraint in order that the intermescent expansion is directed inwards. Hence, if PU foam is to be used to seal an opening around such a device, evidence must be available which demonstrates the required pipe fire performance under test. There needs to be proof that that foam isn't going to crush itself and therefore not offer the structural uh, strength around the pipe wrap to give it the, the fire stopping performance it needs. PU foams are combustible and hence the rate at which combustion occurs under standard heating conditions will be dependent upon such factors as the available oxygen and the presence of, of conductors cap sorry, capable of transferring heat into the seal. With respect to the former, the aspect ratio, gap or opening, width or seal depth, will be a key factor in determining fire performance. In the case of heat transfer, the presence of penetrating metallic pipes or cables with large metallic conductors will have a detrimental effect on fire performance and should be seen to be within the scope of the assessed applications. Finally, care should be taken when the bonding properties of the foam under fire conditions may be critical to the performance of another element. For example, if the foam were to be used to bond the frame of a fire resistant door into a structural opening without the use of additional mechanical fixings. In such a case, the erosion of the foam as it burns is likely to significantly weaken the stability of the frame, to the point where it has a detrimental effect on the fire performance of the door assembly. Therefore, mechanical fixings are also required to be used to fix the frame into place. Hence, as with intermescent pipe wrap, proof of performance in the intended application must be available before use of additional fixings are intended to be used. Okay, so I've mentioned how uh, PU foams are currently be used on site incorrectly. So what products can we use correctly in place of these foams? Unlike many PU foams, the Hilti CFS FFX flexible fire foam is a true expanding fire seal. It will cover a broad spectrum of applications without the use of an additional fire stop coating or additional mineral wool back as a back filler. The new foam's three-phase technology enables it to mix consistently, expand six-fold and cure faster. The foam becomes shapeable after approximately five minutes and can be cut after around 10 minutes. 
In addition, single cables can be retrofitted easily without drilling or cutting. The foam has up to two hour fire rating, is gas smoke tight and has excellent sound insulation properties. Another one of our fire stop foams, the CP620, is similar to the CFS FFX and also allows for the filling of small to large penetrations. It's a slightly more rigid material than the previous foam, so therefore offers a small level of structural stability to larger penetrations. It also acts in a similar way to a sealant, so it has a level of water resistance. However, unlike the CFS FFX, it does not allow the repenetration if cables are to be added at a later date, so therefore cannot be considered as flexible. Another option would be the fire stop sleeve. This can be used in masonry, concrete and drywall. It's easy to install and inspect, whilst also being repenetrable. By this we mean that after installation cables can be added or taken away depending on the service requirements. The sleeve has ETA FM approval, it's UL tested and is fully functional after installation. So as soon as it's fixed correctly onto the, uh, the wall or in through the wall, it can be used to, to accept the cables and therefore is ready to be, be used for the application. Another option is the fire stop block, the CFS BL. It's a removable fire stop product that is commonly used for large openings that require repenetrations, allowing a temporary or permanent seal around cables, cable bundles and cable trays in wall and floor openings. It's a fantastic option for use in rooms with dust and fibre free requirements or areas that often change services such as server rooms, laboratories or hospitals. These are just a few of the fire stop products that we have available. If you'd like any further information or details, please do not hesitate to contact us and we can assist. Again, depending on your application, different products may be best suited to what you require them for. Okay, so to summarise what we've gone through today in the webinar. As we've mentioned, we are aware that PU foams are in wide use in the construction industry. We just need to be more certain that they are being used correctly and that the correct products are being utilised in the correct applications. As we discussed in our previous fire stop webinar, passive fire protection is designed into the structure of the building. So if a fire breaks out, it is contained within a fire compartment, surrounded by fire resistive walls and floors. The compartmentation is provided by the way the building is divided up to contain a fire for a given period of time, to permit escape and to limit the damages to assets. If this is not done correctly, then there are consequences. Ultimately, the cost comes out of your product pockets through increased premiums and in turn cost of goods and services. The other cost that is not highlighted is the number of severe injuries that result from fire. In some cases, these injuries lead to death sometime after the fire. At the moment, there is no mechanism to record these deaths. These are generally attributed in the death certificates, things like heart attack or pulmonary failure, etc. Business interruption is also a serious issue to the economy. These are all things that need to be considered if we can stop them by making sure the correct products are used on site. Passive fire protection is designed into the structure of the building, so if a fire breaks out, it's contained within a fire compartment, as we've mentioned. For the walls and floors to maintain their fire resistance, however, every opening, penetration and joint must be sealed against the escape of fire and smoke. This needs to be done correctly, using the correct products for the job. Okay, so how can we help you to make sure you've got the correct products and that the correct things are being specified on site? One such way is to use our Fire Stop Selector tool. This is freely available and you can access it by your desktop, laptop, tablet or smartphone, making it available wherever you need it. Uh, the address for the site is here and on the attached slides that, with this presentation. Uh, but if you need any, have any questions about its usage or how to use it, how to get hold of it, please do not hesitate to contact us. We can also provide engineering support on site and in your office should you require it to help deepen your understanding in the technology and design areas relevant to your business and gain an insight into our latest innovative system solutions. We're able to do so through various channels. We have a field-based engineering team that can speak with you face-to-face -face should you require it. And we're also available via telephone or via email. And you can also find out information on our website. We have various fact sheets and technical data available there. Please use the contact information shown here to get in touch with your local Hilti technical team. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Today's webinar, Firestop PU Foams. If you have any other questions, please contact us via this contact information. And once you leave today's webinar, you'll be receiving a short survey on the presentation. We would appreciate if you would complete that and provide us with your feedback. 
You will also receive a follow-up email within 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar should you require it. On behalf of Hilti, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.